Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. And just picture this. This is Jody Oddy as she trots into a Pilates class. If you want some, I'll give it you. You want to do it me? I don't mess with this lady because she, nothing's going to get in the way of her and her creating a little bit of zen. Excuse me, that is not true. If you're nice to me, I'm perfectly nice to you back. But if you want to claim some real estate that's not yours... Then I'll give you some. You're right. Exactly right. So you, you, you try and tell me this isn't your voice. If you want some, I'll give it you. You want to do it, mate? You can't deny that that is absolutely your voice. I said, I said, you want some, I'll give it you, to the woman that tried to say, oi, that's my space and I've reserved it. It's like a parking spot. No. Yeah. Piss off. Enjoy, enjoy Jody's Pilates confrontation. We're all here for it. I go to Pilates. And it's supposed to be Zen, yeah? Yeah. Pilates yoga, it's all about con- good headspace. connecting to the inner breath and just taking the time for yourself. Not so the other day when I went to a class. And I walk in, Andrew Hayes, and everyone's setting up for the Pilates class. And there is a mat on the floor and a drink bottle. So obviously someone's claimed their territory. That's fine. I go to put my mat next to their setup, right? There's no one there. Okay, so I start to set up, and in she walks. And she looks at me, the owner of the mat, and goes, I'm here. (laughs) And I just looked at her, and I looked around, and there was space for days. Like, there was so much room. And I said, are you joking? (laughs) I said, have a look around you. There is so much room. You need to move four inches that way. (laughs) And she's like, I was here first. So, are you the person? Are you the person at a completely empty theatre that goes up and sits next to the only person <laughs> no, in the theatre? No, is that what you did? No, you go sit next to someone on the train. There's no one, and you're like, "Why are you sitting next no, to me?" No, absolutely. I can sit here. No, 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 no. This is more about a woman who's like, "This is my space. This is my spot, and you are not to encroach on it." So, effectively, because I'm a child, I roll up my mat aggressively, passive aggressively, and I gather my Frank Green and my socks with the little padded things on the bottom so they're sticky and you can stay on the floor stationary. And I move to the back of the room and I cram myself in as if to say, oh, look. And I look at her and I go, see, you've got the whole class to yourself now. Are you happy? You said that to her. <laughs> yes. Oh. So what was her? Because I can imagine just how aggressive and gangster this setting would have been given that there were Frank Green bottles involved. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And so I do the class from the back of the room, crammed in like a sardine, just absolutely absolutely seething the whole time when I should have been connecting with my breath. And I'm looking at her, uh, Hazy, she was terrible. She was terrible at Pilates. So the class ends, everyone's inhale, exhale, namaste, thank you so much, hope you all feel better. And I walk out and I glance at her and I said, may I suggest if you're going to take up prime real estate in Pilates, you may not want to suck at it. (laughs) That's not zen at all. It's like the opposite of zen. (laughs) What is it with these women that think their spot in the gym is theirs? We all all pay fees. We all make the effort to get there. You don't have ownership over a spot. I'm uh, just going to say something. And just look, just hear me out here. Hear me out here. And don't get upset, all right? Keep that zen within you. But there's some Karen vibes about you. <laughs> no, there's not. No, there's not. <laughs> did you complain to a manager or did you complain to someone higher up? I had a chat to the instructor yes, you and did. Did. <laughs> of course you did. With your pop again. She agreed. I'd like to see the instructor, please. <laughs> <laughs> For great deals and cheeky getaways, whatif.com has just the place. A winter hideaway is great, but bring on spring. Jump on the What If app to book hotels, apartments, holiday rentals and more. What If is Aussie for travel. Now that's a joke. That was a joke. That's a joke. A joke. <laughs> that's a terrible joke. Best way to start a Monday is with a few of these. <laughs> yeah. Uh, am I right? Uh, am I right? Can you remember the old can laughter on all the soaps that they used to play? Was that yeah, canned? It was all canned, yes. I thought everyone was having just a sensational time. <laughs> Think about it all could have been without that can laugh. Yeah, so true, mate. Yeah. Yeah. Who's kicking us off? Well, welcome to you, News Red Abby. Morning. Hey, this shouldn't this shouldn't be so stressful. Why are you so I get really um I feel sick. Like I get real anxious before coming in here. Right. You're just trying to have a bit of fun. Come on. I know, it's so silly. 
Really? It's, look, if your joke sucks, we've always got the canned laughter. We're so fine. Don't and worry. And you've yeah. never played that for me ever before. You've just done crickets. Yes, so I've got that as well. <laughs> <laughs> and this one, it's really shocking. <laughs> <laughs> Which you've made as you Yeah, I'm of pretty sure you've done that a few times for me. Well, anyway, apparently you've got the world's longest joke, so you may as well kick us off. Okay, I'll kick us off. You ready? Right, you ready? Yep. A girl and boy sit in a religious class at Uh-oh. school. The girl <laughs> falls asleep. The teacher asks the class, who created Earth? The boy pokes the girl with the pencil, and she says, uh, God. Then she falls back asleep. The teacher asks the class, who were the holy family? The boy pokes the girl again with the pencil. She wakes up and says, uh, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. <laughs> And she falls back asleep. The teacher asks the class, what did Mary say to Joseph after Jesus was born? So the boy pokes the girl again with the pencil, and she wakes up startled and yells, if you poke me with that thing one more time, I'll snap it in half. <laughs> Do you get it? Oh. So I think what happened there was a little bit of confusion as to who she was talking and what she was talking about. Uh, okay. Thank yeah. you for mansplaining that to no, me. Yeah, so I really appreciate it. You're so welcome. Um, so I'll go next, but I guess I, I think we've got a theme this morning because my joke's along similar lines. Anyway. Isn't okay. it funny how we have the same thing, yet we didn't pre-organise it? No. It's like I the know. M&F off. I mean, the M&F well, I mean, big- <laughs> off. Excuse me? It's like the M&M off. Excuse me? What did you just tell us to do? <laughs> Just trying to have some fun here. Can you please keep it a little bit PG? <laughs> okay, you ready? Yes. All right, Hazy and Abby. Who is the most popular guy at the nudist colony? Hazy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <Not> the joke. <laughs> the one who can carry a cup of coffee in one hand and a dozen donuts. <laughs> <laughs> That's Good. A dozen donuts. Good oh yeah. Boy, oh boy. You've got a good two My and a half in you. God. <laughs> a little bit the going mini on ones you. you're talking, <laughs> the mini ones you're talking yeah, about, Joe. <laughs> All right, you ready? Oh, don't worry. The boys play at home. So we'll take that. <laughs> take two and a half for sure. Oh, All right, here we go. Big build up. Come on. Okay. Big build up. Here we go. Big girl pants. Go okay, on. Ready? Yep. What should you do if a bird craps on your head? What? Ooh. Probably not take her out on a second date. Oh. <laughs> that's good. That's why she's the best. That's, good. that's why she's the best. <laughs> <laughs> 13, 2014, can you do better? Probably not. Oh, uh, let's put it to Tom Wren next. Send us a text as well, 0499 Let's start it with a joke. Ladies and gentlemen, news read out. Abby, yes. the, the comeback story of the century. <laughs> The Weekend Sports Wrap with Tom Wren. I love sexual healing. I mean, Tom Wren, it's just a bloke who is over the top organised. Yeah. So <laughs> we got in here this morning and I yeah. walked in the studio about five to six and Rennie's in there just crunching numbers yeah. and just reciting. I was like, Rennie, just... spend some time with your family. I know. He was doing a real quarter by quarter analysis of the Diamonds and the World Cup and yeah. all the breakdowns and all that sort of stuff. Actually, he's just walked in with three and a half seconds to spare. And you know, you know, ladies, if you're listening this morning when you meet a man who would be nothing without his wife to organise his life, that's Tom Wren. And that's his wife, Sarah. Yeah. You'd a be a sense, hot mess really. without her. Tom, oh, I'm, I'm a total mess anyway. Yeah. You, you said three and a half seconds. I'm actually annoyed because I could have come in a second later. <laughs> <laughs> it's made it a little bit, little bit tighter. You're not a mess at all. And saying that, your glasses are literally upside down. <laughs> Apart from that, you're on fire. Hey, Rennie, let's talk Crows first up. Siren. The Crows were challenged, but they hold on and hold off the Crows. Get the job done over the Suns. A tenth win of the season for Adelaide, and they keep their finals hopes alive. Ooh, what do you reckon? <laughs> finals hopes in the mix? Well, they are. First time since 2017, if they can do it. But they lose another defender, Hazy Chase Jones, unfortunately, a foot injury. And it could be a significant one, so maybe six months. Um, hopefully it's not that serious, but they find a way. You know, the Suns are plucky. They're a good side, Gold Coast, but they got it done, Adelaide. First quarter was probably where it was set up. They might have to win all three to make it, and they've got Brisbane away this week. I think they can beat Sydney and West Coast the last two, but tough one this week. But that said, 10 wins, they've definitely improved, even if they miss the finals this season. Yeah, it just sort of seems as well, Brisbane are somewhat wounded at the moment. Brisbane are the Gabba. 
Yeah, it's a different tough. beast. <laughs> mm, tough. Yeah. The, um, the gabatoire. The gabatoir. Ah, the gabatoire. <laughs> oh, Good, I like, like that. that. You're yeah. welcome, guys. Yeah. I'm oh. out now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you just sit I'll just walk myself out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was a positive footy result. This was the tough loss. It will be a final margin of 12 points for the Cats. Yes, yeah, a game. Oh, they nearly pulled it off. Alir, Jones, Farrell, Finlayson, Bergman, Dixon, and then lost it during the week. A um, few outs? That, haven't they been smashed? I actually thought it was a pretty good effort to get as close as they did. Didn't get the rub of the green in the last quarter, really, with the umpires either, did they? There were oh. some decisions that went against I, them. I'm never really one to complain about the umpires, but there were some baffling decisions, mm. weren't they? And yeah. you jump online afterwards and just all the Port Faithful were teeing oh. off. Yeah, and, and what it does mean is probably top two now gone, you would think. Uh, with Melbourne and Brisbane ahead of them, it's going to be hard to get back to second, but they should still lock in top four. They need one more win to absolutely guarantee it. Um, Hazy, those out she spoke about, they'll get quite a few of them back mm. this week, and that's going to help, but they just need to find a way, Port Adelaide, um, and I did like the way they, they sort of guts things out, but Trent McKenzie, yes. he looks like he's done a PCL, and I mean, you'd be able to tell me that that's usually at least a few weeks. Well, I'm mean, sort of saying, well, here's the thing about the PCL. We'll find out uh, today in terms of just how long it'll be out for, but usually it's four to six weeks. And mm-hmm. saying that, Charlie Dixon earlier in the year had a PCL injury. He missed only one or two. Yeah, so it's very much a watch this space. And Trent McKenzie. is a quick healer. He's a quick healer. We, we need to tap into that, don't we? Oh, I remember that time, what, round one last year where he hyper-extended his knee. He was out for like six minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been out forever. Yeah, 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 I'd see, yeah exactly. Um, just before we move on to the Diamonds, what about Hawthorne taking care of Collingwood? Well, how about it? Unbelievable. Like this... Yeah, and and the last two weeks, Jodes, it's impossible yeah, to pick, it's, isn't it? it mm. It's so hard. And Carlton seven wins in a row, first mm. time in twenty three years. It's just all been flipped over on its head in the last probably fortnight. Mm, looking forward to Carlton doing a big poo in the bed. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's just Carlton, isn't it? Well, isn't it just so Carlton, Carlton things? I mean, Dacos out as well. That's They're huge. Throwing the Brownlow betting right up. I, yeah. I think it's probably Bontempelli or Petraka, but. Maybe Rosie Butters if they have a really, you know, big final few weeks. But G. Bontempelli was good on Friday night. I feel yeah. like Rosie and Butters just take votes off each exactly. other each week, don't yeah. they? Yep. So good. All right, Rani, here's a big grand final. <laughs> Yeah, um, sorry about that audio as well. <laughs> I had to record it on Joey's phone. Oh, no, <laughs> we're not even anywhere. joking. Oh, really? <laughs> the Diamonds have just won the World Cup in Cape Town, and we had to record that audio off KO off yeah. my phone because it's nowhere on the internet. Oh, and Randy, no. and Randy, if I had my time again, I probably wouldn't have played it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounded like she was in and out back Duddy or something, didn't it? When she's calling that one. But great, look, what an effort. Because they, they lost to England only yeah. two, three days ago yep. in a thriller, 56-55, and then they turned it around and they smashed them in the final, 61-45. Yeah. to 45. Yep. 12th World Cup win. Um, they're just a powerhouse, the they're Diamonds. They're just unbelievable. And I almost, I was almost willing Jamaica to make the final. They would have had to have get over us, uh, over us to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you want to lose to anyone, it's Jamaica because they're yeah. the queens. Yeah. They're just so cool, those They people. are so cool. Like, in everything they do, they yeah. just make it look so much better, don't yeah, they? Yeah, and then we got Matilda's tonight. And then, huge game. Yeah. That is massive. What about Sweden and the USA last night? That penalty shootout was one of the most epic things I've mm-hmm. seen. It was great to watch it, and and the ball literally Sweden. It went over. They said by less than a minima- millimeter. It was one of those results that was just phenomenal. And if um, Hazy seems distracted this morning, he's very busy trying to find the person who decided to hold the netball World Cup at the same time yeah. as the FIFA soccer. Yeah, they've, they've gone into hiding. <laughs> Hey, Rennie, before we let you go, you know exactly what to do. Oh, Monday yeah. morning joke off. You Here know. we go. What have we got? Now, we you got? know how when you do your passwords, and I hate this, they make you do numbers as well as, yeah. you know, the letters and all that stuff. Yeah. So anyway, I thought, well, how's it going to go for the great man? And the great man I'm talking about is, for today, what is Forrest Gump's computer password? <laughs> one, Forrest, one. <laughs> <laughs> That's not bad. <laughs> the barometer is new for Abby. <laughs> she's having a bit of a giggle. Yeah, she liked that one. Do you give that a fast Come on, Abs. Oh. Yeah, yeah, she's... <laughs> Fire up, Abs. <laughs> hey, really appreciate your time. Thank thanks, you. Thanks for that. I'm happy with that joke. Yes. Oh, Sydney. Oh, they do things a little bit differently over there, don't they? I and I can take the piss as well because I'm formerly from New South Wales. Yeah, so true. Yeah. I just feel like they think they're so good 
that they can get away with anything. Yeah. But can they? I think I genuinely still have mates in Sydney who don't know where Adelaide is, couldn't locate it on the map. Wow, good. Don't come here. Yeah. Before I came here, I probably couldn't locate it. (laughs) Yeah. But now I'm here, I can definitely find it, I think. Yeah, that's good. (laughs) Because you live in it. Yeah. A seemingly simple dispute between Aussie neighbours has ended up at a court battle all because of a single hedge. That is just prime Sydney, isn't it? Mm. A couple was ordered by the New South Wales Land and Environment Court to keep their hedge at a certain height after two New South Wales women initiated proceedings against them following several failed attempts at negotiating themselves. And I'll tell you what, the New South Wales Land and Environment Court, what a Christmas party that would be. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, boy. Where are they holding their Christmas party? (laughs) I'm not really sure. The New South Wales Land and Environment Court. Oh, guys, it's 8pm. We should probably get home. We should probably wrap it up. We should probably get home to Hey, 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 I, I, I feel like... I feel like a Bacardi and Daiko. Oh, no, oh, no, no, not no, for no, me. No, no. No, I'm good, What's thanks. wrong with you? Yeah. Irresponsible. You know how sometimes we get asked to MC gigs? Yeah. That's not one I'd take on. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> That's yeah. a hard no from me. <laughs> when every single one of the clientele is completely 100% sober looking at you, judging at your every word? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll leave that alone. No, Thank you very much. Pass, thanks. <laughs> Catherine Lestrange and Louise Ann Lau successfully sought orders for their neighbours, Alison and Jason, to prune their hedge regularly to protect the view of the waterfront property they bought in February 2021. Okay. Can you break this down for me? So the neighbour's hedge is blocking the, the other neighbour's view, is that yeah, right? Yeah, bit of a view. Right. They're trying to get them to uh, just sort of cut it down. But that's an extreme example of a nice little neighbourhood dispute. Yeah. And do you know what we've always said in here? Yeah. Just just trim your hedge. Trim your hedges. Just oh, my God. Keep your hedges trimmed, for goodness sake. And then everyone wins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, what are you talking about? What? what? I'm, talking about, <laughs> I'm, I'm talking about keeping your hedge trimmed. Yeah, of course. What are you talking about? 13, 20, 14, uh, give us your best uh, neighbour disputes. I reckon pretty much everyone across their journey has had a neighbour dispute. Yeah. I've told the story before about uh, my old Italian neighbour back in the day when I was living in Prospect. <laughs> the one that pulled a gun on you. He pulled a gun on me. <laughs> Bunch of us. Uh, I had. I think I had the entire Central District Footy Club around. Yeah. We're having made a bit of a day of it. Yeah. Started at eleven in the morning. Yeah. And he came out at two, yeah. two p.m. and said, "Keep the noise down, or I'll call the police." Yeah. We said, "Sir, it doesn't quite work like that." Yes. I don't think you can make a noise complaint in the middle of the day, particularly when it's a Saturday. So true. And then he re-emerged with a twenty-two rifle. <laughs> oh my gosh! I've never <laughs> moved quicker in my life. It was unbelievable. I've never felt like that before as well. Yeah, and then all your teammates were like, why can't you move that quick on the footy field? No, no. (laughs) I just needed a bit of motivation. (laughs) And then his 30-year-old daughter the next day came out and said, no, no, it was actually a broomstick, which was (laughs) much more offensive than him pulling a gun on us, I thought. Isn't that master gaslighting? No, I don't know. I don't know what you thought you saw, but that wasn't a gun. That was a crazy. You're crazy. I was like, he shot me. There's a bullet (laughs) in me. No, 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 no. That's always been there. Are you sure? <laughs> Thirteen, twenty, four, ten. Your best neighbour disputes. You've had some interesting neighbours. Oh, mm. haven't I? Yeah. Um, we, we've had well for a long time. Just across the alleyway, we had a, a, a place where you could go and get a, a massage that was special. Let's just put it that way. No, I mean, if you've got tight hammies, it's a really special massage. If it's nice and deep, because it loosens you up, and then yeah. maybe you'd run a bit quicker. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I don't. I don't think it was remedial, Hazy, oh, okay. To be fair, right? I think it was a little more than that. Like mental. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes. Like a mental massage. Yes, they would massage your head to make things better. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, they've moved now. Oh. Yeah, they've relocated. You, so. you guys didn't follow them. <laughs> <laughs> I think my husband wanted to. <laughs> Greg's like, "Hey, do you want to move to Painham Road now?" <laughs> yeah, who would have thought? Good stuff, Greg. <laughs> Let's go to Hannah from Manapara West. Hey, Hannah. Hey, how are you? Good. What's the fight over? Uh, so the fight was, it was just over like kind of, so my story was a little bit different from the hedges. So we actually, um, my neighbour got, was just came back and it looked like his house was broken into and my housemate at the time just got home from work, like got home from work. Yeah. And he, he, they, talked a little bit and like not really yelling at any like yelling or anything and just he walked like my housemate walked inside and then next minute um he our my neighbor smashed our wind like our door so the glass of the door and it woke me and my partner up and we're like what's going on and then yeah our housemate was like yeah he thinks we broke like i broke into his house and 
like, we didn't. Well, he didn't. But, yeah, and I was just like, he just was a little bit, not crazy, but, like, just, oh. yeah. Oh, no, no, still, no. Uh, no, no. Yeah, no. He's still, yeah. not, he's still not crazy to you, Hannah? You sure? <laughs> I mean, I beg to differ. No, <laughs> no, so we have, no, we have, like, we've moved since then, but since that problem, we have, like, we talk, he, we were walking past with our dogs, me and my partner were walking past with our dogs, and, like, we chatted to him, and he he, what, he was a lovely bro, um, guy, but he just, he just had a bad night, <laughs> yeah. must have been drinking a bit too much, yep. and it just happened, so... Yeah. Like, I tell you it, what, it terrified us for a few, few like probably like probably a month. But yeah. it happens. Yeah. It happens. I'm yeah. telling you, it happens all yeah. the time. When I say all the time, I think it's pretty rare, but <laughs> <laughs> a little bit scary. Oh my goodness! Oh Hannah, my gosh, Hannah, you're very forgiving, doll. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm a pretty uh, easygoing person. If uh, yeah. if something ever happens, I, I will always forgive them. If <laughs> Just two chances, and then that's it. Just yeah. two. I, I just I like as well that you can, you could bash down Hannah's house, and then when Hannah confronts you, you just yeah. go, oh, "I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry." We had a bad night. Oh, we've learned a couple of things uh, this yeah. morning, yeah. and that is uh, Hannah's very, very forgiving. Yeah. And based on this story in Sydney, for goodness' sake, keep your hedges trimmed. That's the one takeaway from this. And also, time. take control of your plants. <laughs> Are you telling me you built a time machine? It's Monday. Woo, you did that on the weekend? Okay. Time to straighten up. Okay. No judgment here. Mm, let's do so. A little bit of judgment. Let's do something good, though. Let's put some knowledge in that brain of yours. <laughs> 7th of August. Let's go back to 1858 when Jody Odia. I'm just kidding. Never you know, gets old. Oh, it never gets old, does it? Yeah. 1858, the first Australian Wolves football match was played. The contest was between Scotch College and Melbourne Grammar School with goals nearly a mile apart. <laughs> Absolute paddock it was played on, <laughs> quite literally. It was played near the side of today's MCG with 40 players per side using a spherical ball, no point posts, and it took three Saturdays to complete. <laughs> oh, my God, what a marathon. Uh, and can you imagine between two of the richest schools in Melbourne? Jeez, tough that, contest, wasn't it? Kick and mark, and it'd be like, good show, old chap. Great mark there, old fella. Oh, no, just a little bum tap as well. Boom. Not much physical stuff was there. That's fine. 1993, twins Phil and Doug Malm of Idaho married twins Jenna and Jill Lassen of Michigan at the 18th Annual Twins Day Festival at Twinsburg, Ohio, 1993. 15 sets of twins witnessed the ceremony. And I've always said this, get to Ohio and Twinsburg for the annual Twins Day Festival. Hell of a day. Could we go there next year? Can I think we, so. Can we take the show to Twinsville? Yes, let's get the show to Ohio. Yeah. Twinsburg. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> 2020, Cardi B releases possibly the greatest single of all time. Whack. Featuring <laughs> Megan the Stallion. It's just an anthem, isn't it? Every time you play that, I get so nervous oh. that you've got the radio edit version. Oh, my gosh. Because if it was unedited, <laughs> yeah. some of the lyrics, I, I think you're right. Radios would blow up. <laughs> <laughs> Just extreme stuff, isn't it? Some real um, interesting lyrics to her songs, aren't there? Yeah, there really is. She doesn't leave anything to the imagination. Yeah. Or maybe too much to the imagination. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, then one song on August the 7th of 2004 was Confessions Part 2 by Usher, where he was a really, really poor partner and then made a heap of money about it by singing about it. Yeah, by yeah. singing about the fact that he couldn't keep it in his little Usher pants. Yeah, he had a little bit of a dirty bird moment. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big weekend coming up. Sunday, 13th of August, Port Adelaide v GWS. But probably more importantly, maybe, Nova's Handball Blitz Grand Final. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it's happening. I cannot wait to unleash these brothers on the world. Yeah. They are a talent. Oh, they've been sent from the uh, handball gods. Yes. I'm sure of that. They're a gift. Oh, they're an absolute gift. Mm -hmm. um, so, look, Tom Duda as well, uh, a couple of weeks ago, sent us, a, sent us a bit of a challenge. He said, look, why don't you two just have a bit of a handball off? Mm -hmm. uh, and the winner um, gets to uh, absolutely just lap it all up. And the loser has to uh, do a segment with a mouthful of, like, intense sour lollies. Not your standard warheads. Um, I think we've got these from... Where, where, have we, where have we got them from? Some... Some country that where they specialise in really sour confectionery. I don't know. 
<laughs> but they're outrageous. <laughs> where's the Where's the international capital of sour confectionery based? Oh, I'm, I'm don't not know. sure. I don't, I'm not sure. I don't know, mate. Yeah, it happened on Friday. Should we recap, Jodes? Uh, yeah, unnecessary. Oh, I'm just going to play a bit of audio, and I need to. Uh, I need to tell you at home. Just picture a really one sided <laughs> contest, and then guess who won? <laughs> Scissors shoot. What the f is that? <laughs> what are we doing here? The handball guys are watching. Let's go. Oh. oh! Come on! I need to stop serving it to my body. <laughs> what are we doing here? I'm so sorry that the handball guys are watching. Come on, Esty. Just watch it onto your hand. Get off of it. I actually want a point. This is crazy scenes. Back point. It wasn't ever in doubt. That's what I want to know. Uh, do you know what was unbelievably disappointing for me? Like actually conceding a point. Mm. Really funny. Two, actually. It was two. two. Is yeah. that right? Yep. Okay, I remember it was 7-1, but that's completely fine. A win is a win nonetheless. Do you know what really hurt you as well? Mm. You won Battle of the Bangers that day. Mm-hmm. You just carried on a little bit too much. Oh, did I? And it gave me a bit. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> okay, I will say this in my defence. I was carrying an injury. I won't... Oh, my I, God. I cannot tell you how I sustained that injury because there are some um, mitigating circumstances around it. Right. But I had a fairly decent injury right before the handball blitz oh. competition with you. Okay. Well, that's very, very interesting. Who would have thought that'd be an excuse? Uh, big thanks to our boys and girls at McGain Real Estate, massive supporters of local, making a difference all over SA. Selling your home, trust McGain. The grand final, it's going to be huge this Sunday. If you want to head along, Port's also taking on GWS um, Sunday over Adelaide Oval. Book your tickets now, portadeladefc.com.au, or give us a call right now, 13 24 10. Juice is coming up. Mm. We might be on the precipice of an, an emerging international pop boy band. Founded right here in Australia. Wow. That's amazing, isn't it? As good as NKOTB. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest breaking story this town has ever seen is huge. I just can't find you, Molly. This is so juicy. Jody's Juice. I want to start with this one, a head. Oh, hello. Oh, that's my headphones gone out. That's okay. I'll just carry on like a true professional that I am. Um, a Melbourne artist has created an impressive mural on Bondi Beach depicting the Matildas amid their FIFA Women's World Cup campaign. Of course, they play tonight. Denmark, what a massive game that's going to be. Do we know what time that's going to be on approximately? I'll get our producer to look that up. Daniel Weber has spent weeks painting the iconic Sydney Beaches seawall with the artwork to be officially unveiled today. The piece shows most of the Aussie women's football side fronted by Sam Kerr, all in the middle of a celebration mm. backed by swirls of differing shades of yellow. It's very nice. Is Sam Kerr playing in this photo or is she on the bench on an exercise bike? <laughs> She's putting a little bit through the car. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you reckon she'll start tonight? As well. As a question without notice? I know this. She's available. <laughs> <laughs> Eight p.m. Tonight, 8 p.m. Thanks, Abby. Um, yeah, surely, surely she starts on the bench and then comes in as a pinch hitter if they need her. You'd hope so. You would think so. What's a pinch hitter too, by the way, in Does world mean? football? Well, no, it's a baseball terminal. Okay, <laughs> shut up. God, you're annoying. I'm just having a bit of fun right, with because it's Monday. Yeah, but it's Monday it's morning. Fun. Well, just ease into it gently before you start whacking me. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, I'll press this. Juicy. Juicy. Just to break things up a little. Mm. Uh, an Aussie boy band blew away the coaches on The Voice last night with newcomer Jason Derulo declaring they could explode around the world. This could be the new One Direction, couldn't it? Sydney prop group. Pop group. They're called Overnight. Yeah. Consisting of schoolmates Tyler, Harry, Kai, Emerson and Jai turned all four chairs during their high-energy performance of the Backstreet Boys in 1999, hit Larger Than Life during the first round of blind auditions. Did you know that they did an NKOTB song? No. Oh. That was just a that genuine was random. fluke. Yeah, righto. Okay. Uh, Rita Ora pressed the button within a second of the five-piece starting the song, which was quickly followed by Jessica Malboy, Derulo and Guy Sebastian. All you people what? What? Wow. Whoa. Oh. 
Are we are we on the verge of something big here, Andrew? Did we just witness something huge and spectacular all at the same time? Was this just Aussie pop history? <laughs> well, that's the way Channel 9 are going to sell it. I'll give you the big tip. Uh, it's definitely a Channel 7 show. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> So, so please don't credit Channel 9 when you're talking about a Channel 7 show. Thank you very much. Juice. Juice. I'm sorry. It used to be Channel 9, yeah. didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Switched over to the good guy. <laughs> <laughs> Jason Derulo, our boy. Oh, God. Well, the whole point of that little scenario is if it's not on 10, I don't care. Yeah, that's what it feels like. (laughs) I get those vibes from you. Anyway, Ed Sheeran has had a concert first on the weekend. It was a very cute moment. So during his mathematics tour... He was in Kansas City um, and he helped a couple reveal the gender of their baby. He said, my first gender reveal, he captioned the video in a clip, he opens an envelope and this is what happened. I will get back to seeing perfect, but I feel like this is like the first time it's opened. It's a girl. Can I just say, as a father of two daughters, it's very awesome. It's very awesome. Uh, isn't he perfect? So this is where I've made another error in Jody's juice today in my head because I thought he was revealing the gender of his baby, but it wasn't. It was someone in the audience. Okay, there yeah. we go. Uh, his kids are named Jupiter Seaborn and Lyra Antarctica. Of course they are. Yeah, they're very unique names. Mm-hmm. Probably could score their own individual handles on X. <laughs> <laughs> Not if to throw some numbers in it <laughs> when your name's Antarctica. <laughs> Very interesting. Isn't it? <laughs> so true. Anyway, that's Jody's Juice brought to you by Channel 7 this morning. Yeah, <laughs> Juice. Juice. Very well done. <laughs>